Another Cougar Coaches Show here on Mediacom Channel 22. My name is Cosmo. With us, the Athletic Director of Columbia College and Head Men's Basketball Coach, Bob Burchard. Coach, welcome. Thank you. We will start. We'll get to basketball in a little while. We'll kind of go chronological a little bit here, and uh, we'll start with uh, soccer and the soccer field. I know uh, the R. Marvin Owens makeover is complete. What was the, the term you said, or reupholstered, was the, the term we talked about last year. And uh, the uh, official unveiling, ribbon cutting, if you will, is going to take place this week in conjunction with the Hall of Fame. Talk a little bit about what that project has been like uh, for Columbia College and for soccer and really all of the athletic department. Well, Cosmo, it's really been amazing. Um, you know, I think the uh, fun thing for me as an administrator is you're involved in um, years of planning uh, to make a project uh, um, uh, come to uh, completion. And you have an idea of the finished product and then how it will be used. And, um, and you kind of sell that idea. Sure. And then um, to actually see it uh, operate the way um, it was planned um, and then uh, and be even nicer than we could have even dreamed um, is, is really gratifying. Um, every single um, um, constituent of uh, our campus has already had an opportunity to, uh, to use the, the uh, facility. Um, it is very much like Southwell in that it's a multi-use facility. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a premier soccer facility, but uh, we've also had uh, intramural events out there. We've had uh, student free play out there. We've had walkers and joggers uh, uh, around the perimeter track. And um, we've had other sport teams practice and train. And so those are all the things that we were shooting for. And, um, and then on top of that, to have the uh, aesthetic uh, quality that it does, um, has really just changed, I think, the, the north end of our campus. Well, really the entire, both between the field itself and then the two separate buildings, the one where the, the Optimus Club are now out of their trailer and the Porta Potties have been retired to Porta Potty Hall of Fame or wherever they went. Uh, maybe they should have been saved somewhere. And, no, they, and, no, they should not No, okay, saved, never no. mind. Bad <laughs> idea. Uh, but that facility alone with the, with the picnic table set up there on the, uh, the west side, if you will, uh, and it seems like there's still kind of a little bit of growth with, with that building and then the press box and locker room facility with, with five separate locker rooms, including two for each team, home and away, and then the, lock, the um, officials locker room plus the press box facility. Uh, it just really frames the entire uh, field in along with the science building that's been there now for half a dozen years or so. Well, I think the, um, the critical um, planning part of that uh, was through uh, Simon and Oswald Architects and, and wanting to have the flow from the Bruder Science Center um, just continue north and I, I really think they achieved that. In fact, some of the exterior materials were materials that were left over from that uh, project and so that's how closely matched um, uh, those two um, concepts were. Um, I think everything you mentioned um, was meticulously planned um, because our space was uh, very small. It's a, it's a very tight space for the, the largeness of a, a, a soccer field. Um, and so we've been able to um, make it more fan friendly. Um, we've got, uh, you know, a very nice looking um, entry into the facility uh, with the ticket window. We have public restrooms, as you mentioned. We have um, a concession area. Um, but then also our grandstand is very fan friendly. Um, it, it almost seems quite a bit larger. Oh, it's yeah. the existing bleachers, but uh, the, the pre-existing bleachers, but uh, it, it's got a, just a, a, you know, a nice um, concrete um, uh, pad uh, for them to sit on and, and, uh, and then a, a kind of a family picnic area. And um, so I, I think it, we took care of our, our um, fan area at a really high level. As we move to the uh, east side of the field, um, we've now been able to put our soccer teams in their own locker rooms. Um, and they have varsity locker rooms, which are uh, really almost serve as a clubhouse, which I, I think is a, a really a neat um, part of the project in that um, in inclement weather, the, their bench backs right up to the, to the locker so they can get in and out of the weather or take care of, um, of needs um, right there at the bench, much like uh, a dugout in professional baseball where you can just step step away from the, the uh, competition field. 
and be protected. Um, and then also we have visiting team locker rooms and, um, and I think um, another very important um, piece of that is um, an athletic training room on site uh, so our, our student athletes can be treated uh, right there uh, on site without having me to be transported up to, to Southwell Complex. Um, and then also an officials locker room. Um, so uh, our participants and our fans uh, I think uh, have, a, have a great environment uh, for their experience. And then um, for those like you, yourself who are working the game, uh, from a media perspective, having an elevated press box um, that's air conditioned and climate controlled um, is, uh, is nice. Um, and just like everything else uh, nowadays, uh, Cosmo, technology has kind of taken over that space and um, things we were doing manually in, in your world in broadcasting, but also the, the video um, capacity is, um, is taking a major jump. Um, I, I think one of the coolest things in, in terms of um, uh, video and, and broadcasting out to the world, um, you know, the, the games which you do, it, but uh, also um, being able to share that video with the, the coaches and, um, and the opposing uh, team immediately. Um, it's just basically a file, push send, and uh, on the bus ride home, you can watch the game on your phone and start your, your preparations. Um, so uh, I, I really, um, from that standpoint, from the competition standpoint, taking care of fans, uh, student athletes, and, um, and the people who work the game, um, I, I think was very well planned. The video aspect, uh, I already know, especially with as many uh, international players on the, on the soccer squads over the years, it's been, I think, three in a row now that uh, Ed and Campara, the men's team, has been chirping, asking me, when are we getting video? When are we getting video? And now it's finally here, and uh, many family and friends from him and other players uh, as well can, can watch the, the video broadcast uh, of the soccer matches for both the men and women uh, at home and the women's team for the first time, a little milestone, another notch, if you will, in that program in their fourth season here, uh, their first top 25 ranking at 6-1. and one. Coach Klein's Cougars off to a 3-0 start in conference and, and a, a proud moment, I know, for, uh, for the ladies on that team, for sure. It's, an, it's awesome, uh, Cosmo. It, it just seems like each of our teams um, have a way of um, working their way up the ladder in, into the elite status of the NAI. Um, women's soccer, um, it's hard to believe it's been four years, uh, to be honest with you. And um, I, I think the ladies uh, uh, have, have been consistently good. Uh, Coach Klein and, uh, has um, uh, shepherded both those programs to elite status and we're certainly proud of uh, being on the list. Uh, both those teams in action this weekend with the uh, Family Day and uh, Homecoming festivities, Hall of Fame festivities uh, this weekend on Friday night for the Hall of Fame and Saturday doubleheader. Then the women have an individual game on Sunday and then the rest of the season, quite a few games, uh, although they both finish with, with uh, a long road trip at the end of the season in October. Uh, we'll come back, we'll talk more about the, the future, some sports. Uh, you have a baseball coach, Darren Munns, uh, comes to Columbia College from in the conference at William Woods. Do you have a field yet? We'll answer that question or talk more about baseball, track and field, and the Hall of Fame class uh, coming up here with head coach and athletic director Bob Burchard on the Cougar Coaches Show, Mediacom Channel 22. Mediacom customers upgrade now for just five bucks during our first ever $5 super sale. That's right, add lightning fast internet up to 15 meg for just five bucks a month. Or upgrade from family TV to prime TV with on demand and stars for five bucks more a month. Or for five bucks a month, add lower cost phone with unlimited nationwide calling. Get our best upgrades for just five bucks each a month for one year. Mediacom's $5 super sale. Call 888-SIMPLIFY. Talking Cougar Athletics with the athletic director and head men's basketball coach, Bob Burchard. I promise we'll get to basketball in just a little bit, but a lot of talk about baseball. Uh, you get Coach Munns uh, as your head man. Talk a little bit about uh, the decision. Pretty easy one, I think. He definitely qualified his track record at William Woods over the 10 years or so there. Definitely comes to uh, building a new program with uh, high regard. You know, Darren uh, has a great uh, resume. Um, both um, in our league and, um, you know, within the sport. Um, 
It was a tough decision for us, actually, because I thought our finalists were uh, extremely um, competitive. Um, our search was strong, but I, we came out with the best candidate for Columbia College at this time. We really felt it was we needed somebody who was experienced in, in building, and uh, Darren is that. Um, he's such a positive person, and um, he's got a big uh, task out there. Um, you know, it, we built several programs, as we've already talked about women's soccer, but the, um, the, the numbers involved in baseball are, are so large that uh, that first recruiting class is, is going to be very important. And uh, so he's been working hard. Um, we're still in the planning processes of uh, where the team's going to play. You mentioned earlier the field. And, um, and then indoor space as well because uh, we are in Missouri and, and you spend a lot of time practicing in, indoors. So um, we're working towards those, um, towards those things. He he's has, it uh, seems like every day, somebody walking around uh, the campus that looks like a baseball guy to me. <laughs> that was my next question. What exactly is the timeline uh, as far as uh, Coach Munz, I guess, recruiting is uh, underway? And when will the first official, I know they play some games in the spring and, and some in the fall, what is the official first season for baseball? Well, it'll be fall of 2016. So um, a year from now, we'll be um, talking baseball and competition. Um, like all sports, they, they um, play year round. Um, in baseball right now, um, much like softball's involved with, you have a, a fall season and um, more, more scrimmage-like. Um, but uh, obviously, it's the best weather we have in Missouri is sometimes in the fall, and so they take advantage of that. So um, we're geared up for fall of 2016. We will be playing baseball someplace. <laughs> you have a backyard that's available or you know of a field, uh, you can contact Bob at Southwell Complex, I'm sure. Track and field, similar thing. We talked to Coach Cornell here a couple weeks ago on the show, uh, building the track and field program. Very similar, especially when you talk about sheer numbers um, with all of the different uh, dynamics that go into track and field, all the different, the jumping and the running and the throwing, all the different kinds of athletes. A couple of coaches on staff, and now it's a matter of uh, building and recruiting. It is a matter of recruiting. Um, Tim Cornell has uh, done a great job in establishing our cross-country programs. Um, they're highly competitive. I know the men's team is uh, looking extremely strong right now. Uh, there are some crossover athletes in those sports, and uh, so I think that helps foundationally, maybe put you a little further ahead than, than baseball. Um, but uh, I know also we've got some guys that like to throw things. <laughs> and so uh, that's a whole nother, uh, whole nother training and um, another recruiting process. Um, we hired Tracy Jex from uh, Hannibal LaGrange. Um, he ran their track and field and cross country program. So uh, we again kind of dipped into the, the conference uh, to find a, a quality uh, assistant for Tim. And then uh, if that continues to build the success of cross country. Uh, am I missing any new sports? Have we added anything that we've kind of, we've missed it all at this point? No, I think we're checking the boxes okay. <laughs> off, Cosmo. Um, but uh, I, I think a real critical thing from our standpoint is um, uh, getting full rosters and uh, seeing our department grow from uh, just a short time ago, about 70 student athletes to we're projecting um, over 200. And uh, that's very significant. And uh, I think it's very impactful on the campus as a whole, certainly is on our department. And uh, we're looking forward to have uh, that many more um, athletic-minded uh, students on our campus. When you move to uh, your main job uh, basketball-wise, the head coach, uh, your assistant for the last several years, Matt Brock, uh, leaves to go in conference to take over Missouri Baptist as the head basketball coach there. Uh, his replacement, you didn't have to stray too far to find, uh, was his brother. Talk about your new assistant coach. Well, you know, the, uh, it, it wasn't hard to find that. Uh, we, again, had a very competitive search. Um, our, our finalists were, um, were all amazing and uh, very strong coaches. Um, I was very happy with the, the, the quality of um, uh, our applicants in, in that position. Um, Thomas uh, really stood out for several reasons. Um, uh, I think number one is that uh, his uh, calm confidence in teaching. Um, you know, it, it became very clear that uh, much like his brother, um, his background is strong. 
Um, he's very uh, well known in the in the state of Missouri. Uh, has uh, just came out of a, a state championship appearance in his in his uh, one year as a head coach, and um, and I, and I think that what was attracted me um, to all those qualities was uh, I really depend on that position to deal with our players um, on a um, very personal one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, since uh, the other part of my job, which we've just talked about, uh, tends to take me away from them uh, uh, more than I'd like, to be honest with you. And so uh, we needed somebody that could uh, shepherd those guys in all the areas uh, that we like to work with them. And, um, and I think he's the right man for the job. Before you know it, uh, you'll be tipping it off. When's the first official practice that you get to have? We've already started, uh, Cosmo, and the NAI gives you 24 weeks of practice and, and competition. Um, we've always uh, used every tw every week, <laughs> well, sure. and uh, so we, we've already started to work. We're going to have a little bit of a scrimmage uh, during homecoming festivities, and um, we'll actually um, start uh, first weekend in November competition. The Hall of Fame uh, inductees, you got the 1999 soccer team uh, from volleyball, Luana Bronco Fields. And uh, from women's basketball, Rachel Oswald Hurt, and then um, uh, Elmont and Kathy Betts, who obviously are uh, big supporters, pretty much the founders of the Cougar Club and Scholarship Fund. Uh, talk about those two and their involvement in uh, how they've helped shape the athletic department and, and, and the Booster Club. Well, first off, the, what, it's a great class. And um, the, the Hall of Fame event is one of my favorite of the year. It truly is the uh, only athletic event of the of the uh, academic year where everybody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> losers. No losers in that one. <laughs> and um, and, and this class is just spectacular. I, I think we're, um, it's going to be the largest attended uh, ev Hall of Fame event that we've had. And uh, so that's, that's very exciting. Um, Elmont and Kathy um, Betts are our founders of our, um, our Cougar Club. Um, you know, they, uh, there was a small group of people who got together 20-some um, uh, years ago and, and decided that they, they needed to figure out a way to help support uh, the students here uh, that, uh, that uh, participate in athletics. And um, so, um, and their consistent um, gifts of their presence, of their guidance, um, and uh, of, of their caring of our students is, uh, is truly remarkable. And, um, you know, in our town, it's always fascinating because uh, we have the three schools, uh, three universities, and, and uh, they're very avid uh, Missouri fans as well, but uh, they're, they're Cougars too. And so I, I think that describes uh, a lot of our um, faithful followers. Most definitely, and uh, very well deserved with Rachel in basketball, a three-year player uh, for the Cougars, and then uh, Luana was uh, instrumental as a, as a hitter with that volleyball squad that uh, made runs. and. And they're both still local here, and I know they're both bringing large contingents. I've seen plenty of stuff on Facebook saying you got about one more day. I'm running out of table space, so I can imagine that the the event will be jam packed. Uh, well, weekend. it is, and our soccer team going in yeah. is uh, it has a whole weekend of events planned, and um, it, 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 which is really the way it should be. And in fact, I think um, they they pretty close to having 100 percent participation coming back, and uh, some from overseas. And so to, to see that affinity for the, the college um, is, is really special. Um, Luana um, is a, a, an amazing person and friend. Um, you know, she's one of our international students that came uh, um, right out of high school and, and took the leap of faith to, to go away to, to school with um, very limited English uh, skills at the time and, and then turned into an All-American um, both on the scholar and of course, uh, on, on the athletic levels, um, and, and so that's a that's a, w a wonderful story, and, and certainly Hall of Fame uh, worthy. Uh, Rachel is uh, part of the early success of our um, women's basketball program. Um, you know, she uh, again is a very typical CC story in that uh, she started at the University of Missouri, but really found her home at uh, Columbia College, and. Uh, I, I think uh, I, I'm particularly looking forward to um, hearing their words um, about their experience uh, during the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony. And I mean, kind of, a, and it just kind of hit me, really a great mix of 
really, if you look at all the sports, uh, the local girl from Boonville and then the international from Brazil, and then the soccer team has a mix of all of that, and really all of the athletic teams have had flavors of both that international student athlete and the local student athletes, and it kind of really what makes Columbia College the family that it is. I think I, I couldn't say any better than what you just did, uh, Cosmo, because, um, and, and I think that's what the college experience is about, um, is uh, developing breadth in, in who you are and, and, the only, and through your experiences. And uh, we see that played out uh, with our uh, student athletes all the time. Good luck in the uh, practice for basketball and uh, enjoy the homecoming festivities, uh, both on the court, on the field, off the field at the ceremonies and more. Uh, for all of the events uh, on that, uh, ColumbiaCougars.com. Coach Burchard, thanks for your time. All right, Coach Burchard, our guest today on the Cougar Coaches Show. Thanks for watching here on Mediacom Channel 22.